Hi everyone, my name is Adam, and after several months of testing and feedback from users like you, ACDC is proud to release Gemstone Photo Editor 12. Gemstone is a multi-document editor aimed at photographic artists. Users familiar with layers and ACDC Ultimate 2022 and raw editing such as that found in ACDC Professional 2022 will be familiar with the layout and structure of Gemstone. However, Gemstone is a new product and today let's examine how to use it. We'll look at the following features, home screen, ACDC raw, multi-document interface, layered editing, and artificial intelligence. Home screen. Gemstone is the first ACDC product to have a dedicated image creation interface. From home screen, we can create a file from a series of default preset categories. Click photo, web, and paper to see those options. We can quickly open previous projects from the bottom section here. Simply double click these images or use shift to select multiples and then hit enter. Creating a new file is quite easy. We'll create a custom by first naming our file. I'll call my image 5000 pixels square. I'll adjust the width and height accordingly. Note that I can change the unit type. I'll keep my image at web resolution of 72. And we'll save this as a preset so that I have it in the future. Click this icon here to save the preset and simply name your custom size. I'll name this preset the same. Navigating to the custom preset panel, notice that our image has been added. I can click create or simply double click my preset to bring it into the editor. Raw Editor. Like Develop Mode in Professional or Ultimate 2022, Gemstone contains a raw editor. I'll navigate to File, Open in ACDC Raw. A file explorer will allow me to select a raw image. ACDC Raw is its own window that can be separated from the Gemstone home screen. On the left is a preview panel with zoom controls on the bottom right. On the right itself is the development tools. And to the right of that is the history, presets, and snapshots buttons. The crown icon is all of the main development tools. Let's make an adjustment to this image. I'll navigate to tune, light EQ, and increase the shadows lower the midtones and increase the highlights. Let's also navigate to tone curves and slightly adjust those as well. I can use the show original button on the bottom left to preview the start of the image before any adjustments took place. There are four tabs within develop tools. Tune, which controls lighting adjustments, Detail, which controls sharpness and noise. Geometry, which controls the shape and perspective of our image. And Repair, which controls spot adjustments. If I navigate back to the Tune tab, you'll notice there are two blue dots next to Light EQ and Tone Curves. These blue dots represent that these tools have active adjustments. I can click the blue button to temporarily hide these changes from view. I can also click the refresh icon to set the tool sliders back to their default states. Note that there is also a master refresh at the top of the window which allows me to undo all of the changes in all tabs, such as in detail, geometry, etc. Lastly, the Tune and Detail tabs have three local adjustment tools, the Brush, Linear Gradient, and Radial Gradient. These tools are for directing adjustments to specific locations on our image, rather than universal changes found within the Tune and Detail tabs overall. 
we're gonna use the brush tool. I will brush over the buildings in my image. I can change the size and feathering of my brush with these sliders here. Note that a red mask becomes visible as I brush. I can toggle it on and off. This mask indicates that this is the area that will see changes when we increase or decrease a brush slider. Underneath the nib tools are the brush sliders. Let's increase exposure. Exposure adds light in the area that I brushed. Note that I can add additional brushes to my image by using the icons at the bottom of the tool. Let's have a quick look at some of the other menu items. History is used to undo, redo past actions. Development presets are designed so that you can save all of your adjustments that you've made to an image for future use on new images. Let's create a new preset category in which to place my preset. To do this, I'll click on the icon on the bottom right. I'll add a category called Custom Lighting. With that category open, I'll right click to Create Preset. A screen will pop up that will allow me to select which settings to save. I can click on any individual setting to omit it. For example, I can omit the brush exposure change by turning off tuning brushes. Alternatively, I can include everything by using the select all button up at the top. I'll enter a name, in this case midtones, and hit OK. Midtones is added to that category. Now, when I open up future images in ACDC RAW, I can apply this preset. Lastly, snapshots. Snapshots allows me to save a specific version of my progress on an image. Have two versions of the same image and want to compare which one you like more? Save a snapshot by clicking the plus button at the bottom. Now, when I change a development tool, for example, white balance, I can save this snapshot and filter between the two. Double click a snapshot to have its settings applied. When I'm done in ACDC RAW, I can click done to save the adjustments and navigate back to home screen, or I can click open to bring up the image in the multi-document editor. Multi-document interface. Let's navigate to file open. This time I'm going to select multiple images. Clicking open will bring these images into the editor and they will be displayed as tabs at the top of my preview panel. I can click on these tabs to bring open the other images. Notice that each image has its own layer panel on the right and are treated as separate files for the purposes of editing. I can close an image tab by clicking on the X next to the image tab. I can open up new images by clicking on the plus button to the right of the image tabs. A window pops up that looks a lot like the home screen. I can create custom files, browse for files, open up templates, or simply click a previous projects like the one we had just closed. I can navigate back to home screen by clicking the home button here. When I do so, a button will appear on the top left of the home screen that actually allows me back into the editor. Clicking on a tab and dragging it off the screen will open it in its own screen entirely. I can click on the tab again and drag it onto the preview pane to re-merge it with the others. I can click on a tab and drag it onto the preview pane itself and a new preview pane will appear next to the first. That will allow me to split the image tabs between the two panes. Layered editing. Let's look at the features of the gemstone editor. 
the preview panel is featured in the center of the screen. The toolbar is featured on the left. The toolbar is broken into five groups, movement, selections, shapes and fill, erasing, and the foreground background color picker. Selecting a new tool, like the brush tool for example, will produce a string of properties that are adjustable as you edit your image. Note that the brush has blending, opacity, and nib size. To the right of our preview panel, we have a quick history that allows you to undo, redo, and see a list of your history actions. Underneath that, we have the histogram, color, and quick actions tab. Note that we'll be covering quick actions soon. Underneath that, we have the layer panel. Images are opened as layers. Here we have a landscape image as our base layer. More layers can be added. If I click the eye icon next to the layer, the layer is treated as hidden until we click the eye once more. Layers have blending and opacity. For example, if I make the opacity of this image 50, 50% 50 of the pixels in my image will be displayed and 50% will be made transparent. Looking to the bottom of the layer panel, you'll see some buttons. Let's talk about what they do. Add a file as a layer. This button allows us to search for a new image and add it to our layer stack. Add a blank layer. Creates a new layer that can be filled. Duplicate layer. Creates a copy of the currently selected layer. The currently selected layer is indicated by the blue frame. Add a mask. Adds a layer mask to the currently selected layer. We'll be touching on this one more momentarily. Delete layer. Pretty self-explanatory, it deletes the current layer. Filters. Filters are destructive edits that can be made to image layers. Add adjustment layers. Non-destructive filters that can be applied to layers. We'll cover this more in a moment as well. And finally, special effects. This allows us to apply text and shape effects like bevel and drop shadow. We're gonna make a very simple change. We're gonna be merging two landscape images to make a composition. Layered editors like Gemstone are about making composition images. Let's add a new image layer with the first button. I'll select my image and click open. Opening a new image brings me into the move tool. Note that the move tool is highlighted and the properties panel has changed. I'll use these yellow markers to reduce the size of my image. I can change my blend mode to multiply to help me place this image with the layer below it. When I'm happy with the location, I'll click OK. I can turn off multiply now too by selecting normal. With my most recent landscape image selected, I'll click the mask button. Masking adds a white square next to our image. This white square is very powerful. Masking allows us to non-destructively brush away parts of our image. Masks are either white or black. This is important. When they are white, they show us that part of our image is turned on. When they are black, they show us that part of our image is turned off. If I click on the mask itself, a box will appear called Mask Properties. If I click the Invert button, the mask will become black. By process, our landscape image on the top of our layer stack will disappear. Keep in mind that black is off and white is on. Let's invert it again. I'll close Mask Properties. Now let's actually start to get creative. I'm going to select my brush tool from the toolbar. I will ensure that my mask is set to a foreground color of black using the color picker. 
I'll start painting black over my trees with the mask selected. Notice that my mask preview shows that I have started to paint it black. I'll brush until I feel like my two images are being combined nicely. Looking at my mask, it's easy to see that it corresponds with the parts of my image that I've made transparent. If I change my brush foreground color to white or right click with the brush, I can undo those parts of that layer by brushing them back on with the white color. Again, white is on and black is off. I'll click my first layer, the layer that appears beneath the masked layer. I'm going to select the adjustment tab and click white balance. Notice that a new layer appears. This is an adjustment layer. I'll increase the temperature of my layer. Adjustments only apply to the images that appear directly beneath them. So this layer is only being applied to my first landscape image. But if I pull the layer above my masked layer, then it is being applied to both layers instead. Adjustment layers always come preloaded with a mask, so you can paint on black or white to choose how they affect your image. Layers, all layers, can be rearranged. This will change the composition of your overall image. Layers are always shown from the top down. Note that when I make my landscape image transparent with the opacity slider, with a masked layer beneath it, the black mask will be presented with the checkerboard, which means that there are no pixels. It's acting as a transparency. Artificial intelligence. A feature unique to Gemstone is its quick action AI functions. I will open up a new image and navigate to the quick actions tab below the history panel. I can use the quick actions like remove background to make a mask of the woman in my image. Now I can place whatever background I want beneath her on the layer panel. Alternatively, I can use select subject to make an active selection of her. With an active selection, I can add an adjustment layer like curves, for example. Notice the mask on the curve thumbnail as I adjust my curve. I can also use quick actions to blur out the background or make the background black and white. That covers all the basics in Gemstone Photo Editor 12. I'll be sure to cover individual tools moving forward in Gemstone, but hopefully this gives you enough confidence to move throughout the application and start trying it for your own editing processes. Please like this video and click the subscribe button hit the bell icon to be notified of future content. If you have any suggestions of things you'd like to see Gemstone do, leave me a comment. Take care.